This video isn't a normal devlog. It's less about what I'm currently working on, so much as the background and motive for why I'm working on it. Similar to a setting in a story, it's not about what's currently happening, but more about why it's happening. In this video, I'm going to talk about the importance of world building in terms of storytelling in RPGs, and show you how I'm creating the world within my own RPG Destiny Break, as well as my influences and motivations that inspired me to dive so deep into world building. The three pillars of storytelling are characters, setting, and plot. Characters are the actors within the plot, plot is the events that unfold around those actors, and setting is everything from where and when, to what happened before, as well as why the plot is happening now. RPGs in particular benefit heavily from their story, and usually exist in vast expansive worlds with many moving parts, all with a story of their own. This is world building. World building is Midgar from Final Fantasy VII. It's numerous dystopian sectors full of inhabitants each with their own little story, as well as Midgar's negative effect on the game's planet. World building is spending hours inside the vastness that is Midgar early on in the game, thinking this city must be the entire world of this game, only to fly over it just before the end of the game and realize it's just a tiny little circle inside of a massive world. And while FF7 may have an incredible world full of many things to see, in my opinion, it pales in comparison to another game in the franchise. The biggest influence and inspiration for the setting of my own game? The world of Spira in Final Fantasy X. A lot of people complain about how linear the world is in Final Fantasy X, but everywhere you go in Spira has its own history, culture, and connection to the plot. Instead of trekking across an empty world map with small points of interest, you're actually making the pilgrimage across Spira that guides the plot. Seeing and learning about each area and its unique culture and history along the way. But even more than that, the world itself has its own character. It's a world with in-depth conflicting religions. They take on the form of the dead person. An illusion, nothing else. Well, have fun! Multiple languages. Different races and culture. Kimari so small, can't see Yankee and Biran's faces. All the way to a worldwide sport that connects a divided planet. Spira is built on the ashes of a once great fallen civilization. And you can see the remnants of it everywhere in the world. It's a world that blames the technology of the past for the destruction that exists in the present. And it's a world that lives in fear of a colossal creature named Sin, and sends summoners on a pilgrimage across the temples of Spira, in order to gain enough strength to stop Sin and bring a temporary calm to the world, until Sin inevitably returns. This world building is the road the plot drives on. Everywhere you go and everything you do is all tied to this pilgrimage vital to Spira's culture, past, and present. The player will never ask, why are we going here? You know right off the bat, and you know what's next. This allows the plot more room to do its own development. It spends less time explaining why, and gives the player more time to form an emotional attachment to the characters, and even the enemies. Because of this freedom, the plot and character development from Final Fantasy X are nothing short of beautiful. Seriously, if you play this game as an adult and don't cry, then you might be a robot. Before I move on, if you haven't played Final Fantasy X, or only played it as a kid, I highly recommend giving it a go. Or even just watching a Let's Play. I'll leave a link to an amazing in-depth Let's Play in the description. I said earlier that FF10's world building has a large influence on the setting of my own game. I wanted to consider why places in my world exist, and what's their purpose, in addition to showing a bit of history for my game's world in order to guide the plot, as opposed to dictate it. While it's all still a work in progress, I wanted to show you how I've been utilizing world building principles to create areas in my game. I previously created the small village of Hillfall early on in my game. 
It's a town that exists near a cliff side of an area not too dissimilar from the Scottish Highlands of Earth. I originally made a small attempt at world building. For instance, I made the houses out of cobblestone, as that would likely be the main resource and export. However, the main buildings lack any uniqueness and serve little purpose. People are just spaced out, and you don't get a sense of how the town functions, or what life might be like for the inhabitants. So with my new tile map tool I showed off in my previous video, I decided to give Hillfall another go. Focusing on the functionality of the town within the world, as opposed to just making it a town for the sake of having more towns in my game. Since its main resource would still be cobblestone, I figured that would also be their main export and the reason for traders to visit Hillfall. And since Hillfall is built along a cliffside, it only has one entrance, so I decided to focus on how a town like that would exist and what buildings would be where. The first building I decided to create would be an inn slash tavern at the entrance of Hillfall. I combined both the inn and tavern into a single building as it's unlikely the town so small would feature a separate building for both. It's the first building you see when entering because it would likely be the first stop for travelers or merchants visiting the town. Story-wise, Hillfall lays in the kingdom I'm basing off of medieval France and England. A lot of old names were Germanic compounding of simple words with literal meanings. Hence the village on the cliffside is called Hillfall. I decided to give the tavern its own identity. And since Hillfall is a mining town, I gave it the name Stonebreaker Tavern. This will be a trend I'll follow throughout the entire game. If possible, I'd like the buildings to have names rather than simply be called Tavern or Inn. The signs outside will be consistent, so the player will know what purpose they serve in relevance to the game. To the west of Stonebreaker Tavern is a small market. This allows separation for where people live in the town to where merchants and visitors will frequent. Shops that would appear as full buildings in larger towns are just stands in the market in Hillfall due to its size. In addition, the market's food won't have as much variety as say a port town or a larger capital city. Hillfall is still a work in progress, but with those small considerations to just one building and the market, the rest of the building's locations will simply fall into place. Having housing and farms west and north of the market, and towards the south, down the mountain will be the mines, where most of the inhabitants will work. With basically only two areas done, most of the questions about life in Hillfall are answered directly without having to explain to the player. It's known what most people do in Hillfall, why it's called Hillfall, and the town's overall contribution to the kingdom. I want to keep this pace going throughout my game's world, and while it's currently nothing compared to Final Fantasy X's world building, I think it's a good start that will really allow me to build a world full of culture, life, and history. If you're working on your own game, take a look at your towns, or even an NPC. What do they do there? Why do they live there? And what's their daily life like? Remember that a lot of the time it's better to have a few towns that really define life and culture in your game world, than have 10 towns for the sake of having more places to visit. And as always, thanks for watching, cheers.